Today on Mr. Media, I'll talk with Joel Meadows, the editor-in-chief of Tripwire, the popular UK comics magazine. Its first digital version was just published as an app for the iPad. Stick around, make friends with Joel, and there might be a tasty Thai dinner in it for you. Well, at least there was for me. So much media, so little time. Who keeps track of it all? That would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is a Mr. Media interview, brought to you by Amazon.com, Audible.com, and 1-800-DIAL-DJs. Please stop by the website, MrMedia.com, click on our advertisers, support the show. And remember, there's more than a thousand interviews available at MrMedia.com. We've been doing this since February 2007. Hope you'll find something you like. And thanks for listening. Mr. Media is recorded live before a studio audience that may be Facebook friends with Joel Meadows, but only because he confused you with somebody else. In the new new media capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. My remaining days in London during August 2013 were down to just two, and I was spending one of them working in my hotel room. I even posted a picture on Facebook of my faux misery, two open laptops, a manuscript, and a fresh room service meal of fish and chips. Moments later, I heard from Joel Meadows, who saw the photo. He asked if I was actually in London. I was. We were already connected via Facebook, although how seemed pretty sketchy, and Joel suggested we meet in person. Well, I was already looking for an escape for the next night from my wife and daughter, who planned on camping in front of the TV for the big reveal of the new Doctor Who. I said, why not? So we met at a Thai restaurant in an area of London that my girls and I had not explored, and Joel and I hit it off famously. Now, it turned out we had plenty of mutual friends in the comic book world, including, and particularly, I think, DC Comics art editor Mark Chiarello, an acquaintance of mine going back to when we were teenagers growing up in central New Jersey. But our actual connection turned out to be fairly tenuous. Joel thought I was somebody else, and I thought I knew him, but I didn't. No matter. He told me over dinner about his long-running UK comics magazine, Tripwire, and about its upcoming digital debut on the iPad. I promised that once it was published, I'd be delighted to feature him and it on Mr. Media. Well, Tripwire Digital Magazine is now a downloadable reality in the App Store on Apple and coming soon to Android and Google Play. And so, my good friend, my new friend, Joel Meadows, welcome to Mr. Media. Hello, nice to be here. Good to have you. Uh, congratulations on the publication of uh, Tripwire Digital. I know uh, it was harder and took much more time than you planned. Uh, still, I assume that you're happy with the result? Yes, we're actually very, very proud of it. It has taken a couple of months because we had to make some uh, other changes to the uh, to the content, and it got bounced back and forth uh, between Apple and ourselves. Mm. But yeah, we're, we're very, very pleased with the results. Um, uh, what uh, what is different between uh, Tripwire in print and Tripwire digital? How how does it you know how does it differ? Well, we're trying to utilize the interactive features a lot more. Uh, we've got an audio interview with author Ian Rankin in the, the first edition. Uh, and we're just trying to utilize the features that we wouldn't be able to in print uh, in the digital format. So hopefully that will ramp up more and more as we publish um, each progressive uh, digital edition. Now, <clears throat> Joel, I imagine that there are people like myself who have never uh, downloaded uh, a magazine uh, app 
on an iPad. Now, in my case, I'll be honest, I don't own an iPad, so I had to borrow my daughter's, and even then I had to go back to her and get help because I don't use the iPad. And if you're not familiar with it, it takes a little a little manipulation to finally get to it. Um, how does it how does it work? Let's say I have an iPad, but I haven't you know downloaded a lot of apps. How do I do it? Well, basically, um, you go to iTunes um, and then you search, for example, for the magazine that you're looking for, and then it should come up. Uh, in our case, we have a front page through our developer, and so we've got the new issue, and then we've got two free sample issues. And so what it is is you subscribe to the app first, and then once you subscribe to the app, it will give you the option of basically buying uh, either the, the new issue or the two older issues, which obviously are free samples. So I think it's reasonably self-explanatory and reasonably straightforward. You would think that, right? Well, <laughs> you have to know what you're doing. And and for uh, now, it's one of those interesting things with the uh, the App Store in that it's available on the iPad, but you can't. It will not work on your iPhone, and it will not work on your laptop, and it will not work on your desktop. So, if you have an iPad, you're all set. If you don't, don't be like me and and spend an afternoon trying to figure it out and think that you can outsmart the system because you can't. However, once you have it on your iPad, if you haven't experienced this, I'm going to say this. Maybe I, maybe I'm the last idiot on earth who doesn't know how to do this, but um, apparently. If you let's say that you uh, download one of the three issues, maybe it's the paid issue for two ninety nine, or yes. maybe it's one of the free issues. Uh, you you'll download it and you'll open it, and all you'll see on your screen is the is the magazine itself. You have to click on the page and get the all the buttons and the navigation to come back up, so you can go back and forth. And once you try yeah. this free sample, you want the navigation so you can go back and buy the real issue. Yes. There, I think I said that pretty well, right? Yes, I think you did. Um, so let's let's talk about the actual issue itself. What this is the I think officially the twenty second overall issue, uh, and and the first digital issue, but there were twenty one in print ahead of it. So, am I saying that correctly? Uh, no, actually there were there were fifty five print issues because oh. it was the trip why it was the twenty first anniversary rather than the trip why twenty one the anniversary book because it was 21 years of the magazine rather than so this will be issue 50 I think it's 56 I'm, I'm not even sure I'm, so, such I'm afraid a, I'm such a nincompoop um, that's right well that's why I ask I want to be sure no no okay. it's good it's good so um, let's talk about some of the highlights of the issue you mentioned that there was an audio interview uh, for yes. starters you couldn't do that in print obviously no exactly what else is in there you want people to know about well basically we've got a couple of things we, we wanted to put a couple of talking points in the first issue, or at least in the first issue and hopefully on other issues as well. The first one is basically our argument that um, um, mainstream Hollywood superhero films are killing uh, quality Hollywood cinema, which is, our, which is an argument that we, well, I mean, some people may disagree with us. Um, so there's that which leads off the issue. And then there's a talk, uh, an article looking at, you know, what's wrong with uh, ABC's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. series. Um, you know, looking at that and, and exploring, you know, the, you know, the problems with the show. Uh, there's a look back at the life of uh, Jeffrey Catherine Jones, who was a, you know, she was, he well, he it was a he was a, an illustrator who was in the, the famous book The Studio with uh, Bernie Wrightson and Mike Kaluta because hmm. there was a documentary out about him. He had a gender reassignment, so he became a woman towards the end of his life. He was an amazing painter. Um, and we also have a piece with the uh, interview with um, the son of, of artist Bob Peake, who did those wonderful uh, movie posters in the sort of 50s to the 70s. And his son's done a, a wonderful art book. So there's a lot in there we're trying to pack it in. I mean, our, our slogan is real journalism. So hopefully we're going to try and adhere to that if we can. Well, and that's the thing. I, you know, I, was, I, wanted, I wanted to describe the magazine accurately. Uh, it's not a fanzine. Fanzine uh, con gives a connotation of something that's kind of amateurish and and done kind of as a throwaway. Um, it's not quite uh, for a U.S. audience. It's not quite where Wizard magazine was. It's somewhere closer to Wizard, I think, if not right there. Uh, and, and it's more like a it's almost like a literary journal for comic books. Uh, I would venture to say. Well, I mean, that's not, a, it's not an unfair comment. I mean, basically, I've worked as a journalist for over 20 years. I've been published in 
things like the Times, Variety, Empire, Independent on Sunday, uh, Time Magazine. And so I, I wanted to try and bring, we've always tried to bring that feel to the magazine. I mean, we did it with our production values when we went full color in sort of 2003. And so we want to try and make it a magazine that people would be happy to look at on the tube or on the subway and with, with some sort of depth. I mean, there are loads of websites and things out there where you can read news, but you know, there's a, there's a lot of breadth, but there isn't much in the way of depth out there. And we've always tried to provide, you know, that sort of depth for readers to give people a, a cultural context for comics and related media, whether it's um, novels, film, TV, animation. You know, we want to try and give people a bigger picture if we can. And just to clarify, because I didn't mean to take away anything on the professional side from Tripwire, um, the reason I say it's not quite wizard is that it's not regularly scheduled. It doesn't appear every month or even every quarter. It it appears, uh, how would you explain the, the publication? Well, periodically. periodically. I mean, the, app, the app is going to be running every two months. So this one came out in the December. So come the end of February, you'll have a brand new issue with all brand new content. And so there'll be one in end of April. You know, it'll run on a bi-monthly schedule, unless it does phenomenally well, and we we might up it to monthly. All right. And you're 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 based in London in the UK, obviously. Uh, how does you know for a US uh, reader of Tripwire, uh, explain kind of the 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 perspective of the magazine? Is it strictly a UK and European or European perspective? Is it a world perspective? Well, I mean, we do cover, you know, non-UK and European material. We always have. I think what mar what's always marks us out from the American publications is that we have the sort of outsider's perspective, you know, almost like the kind of, well, I suppose one analogy could be sort of like the, the R&B bands in London in the 60s, sort of like the Rolling Stones and the Animals, sort of like looking at American culture from a, a UK uh, perspective, from an outsider's perspective, you know, out throughout history and through art. Uh, outsiders have always provided an interesting perspective on on American or on other other cultures, and so I, I think that that's what we're that's what we strive to do, mm -hmm. and we certainly will cover and we have covered um, American material. I mean, Bob Pete was American, Jeffrey Jones was American, um, so it's just if it's of interest to our readers and, and within our remit, we'll certainly cover it. So in the same way that uh, an American music fan uh, might read or might have read in the past. Uh, New Music Ex Musical Express, NME, uh, for music, they might read Tripwire to get a another perspective on comics and comics-related culture. Well, hopefully, yes. I mean, we try and be a bit more honest. We always try to be a little bit more honest. I mean, a lot of the, the coverage of, uh, of comic material has been rather consensual and, you know, no one seems to want to rock the boat and they don't really want to say things, you know, that need to be said which in the long run could improve you know, the medium and just the general quality of the material that's out there. So we, we, still, we still try and bring things to people's attention. Well, one of the uh, things that struck me is that uh, you know, kind of a quick read of uh, uh, Tripwire in print and now, of course, in uh, digital, is that uh, the casual reader will pick up very quickly that you as the editor have deep roots uh, and knowledge of the comic book industry in the UK, the US, and, and beyond. It, it, it's a very, um, there's a sense of humor about the magazine, but there's also, it, you, you know, you take it very seriously. You treat it with respect. Well, I mean, that's, it is about the balance. I mean, it's an irreverent magazine, um, but we do love the source material, and sometimes we feel like it's not being treated, it's not being accorded the respect perhaps it deserves from the various outlets that it's being, uh, you know, the comics are being published in or, or showcased in, you know, if you're talking about sort of TV or film. And so it's just, I think that sometimes people need to step back and, and think and go, you know, this is not, this is not right. This isn't working. You know, why isn't it working? And sometimes people are too close to this material to, to understand why things aren't working. Um, the uh, the twenty first anniversary issue. Now that I'm I'm describing it correctly, uh, is a real is a great mix of uh, all things that have really come before, and it, it it's a great jumping on board uh, point. Is that still available? Can people purchase that? 
Yes, it's still available uh, to order from both Amazon, from Amazon.com and Amazon.co.uk. It is still available. I mean, we did a very limited hardcover run as well, which is available. Um, they can order that sort of directly from us. There's, there's a very small quantity of the hardbacks left, but the paperback is still available. It's still out there, yes. Okay, well, we'll and we'll make it available on the Mr. Media site if people want to order it and take a look. I really recommend it. It's, it's a fun read. It's, uh, uh... It was a lot of fun together. The weird thing was going through you know, 20 plus years of back issues and trying to cherry pick, you know, the, the best and the most interesting and stuff that is still of interest now because there was a lot of interviews that we ran which were sort of interesting at the time but, you know, in retrospect that they haven't held up, you know, it's, it's natural, it's, some of them were quite topical and so some of the subjects are not of interest anymore or they are very, very time specific so I was trying to pick things that are still interesting to read, you know, 15 to 20 years after they were first published. I don't know. I mean, I think everything I wrote in the 1980s would be uh, quite exciting. I mean, is Ghost Rider the next big Superman superhero? I mean, come on. This is. Well, there we go. You yeah, know, I course. mean, uh, it's. Uh, That's very appealing, yeah. I never wrote that, folks. I never said that. I'm just, you know, I'm just goofing here, you know, goofing. Um, so. Uh, if you would maybe describe a little bit about the editorial philosophy of Tripwire. What do you look for? What would you know? What, for example, is uh, a typical Tripwire story, and what would we never find in Tripwire? Uh, well, what you'd never find is you'd never find an article about you know who's stronger, you know, the Hulk or 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 Bane or something. You know, what? it's just okay. Interview over, because that's all I'm looking yeah. for. You know, no, no. So, <laughs> so the Wizard thing. I mean, what was interesting was that when Wizard when it was in his last throws, I know that. They actually looked at, at us and actually wanted to try and replicate the look of the magazine, which I thought was quite funny, actually, and, and sort of flattering in a strange, perverse way. Um, so so you wouldn't have sort of fanish articles. You'd have articles that are, well, sort of of cultural interest without being really kind of highbrow and inaccessible. So you'd have, you know, interviews with, um, I don't know, say a, a current writer. So, for example, in the second issue of the app, We'll be talking to Ed Brubaker, but we'll be talking to him about his uncle who wrote um, Out of the Past and Crossfire, two very well-known film noir films, and talking to him about how writing is in his blood, mm -hmm. you know, because I think that's very, that's fascinating to me. So trying to look at stuff which other people, trying to approach things in a way that other people haven't, and trying to talk to people about things that other people and other publications haven't discussed with you know, whether it's a writer or an artist or a director or a production designer, trying to get under the skin of, of popular culture and do so in a way which is accessible and still intelligent. Hmm. And Joel, what about some favorite moments of yours from the 21, I guess you're into your 26, 22nd year now, uh, at least, uh, some favorite moments of yours, maybe interviews you've done, you know, when you've been with the person or, or uh, places you've been. I know you recently went to uh, the New York Comic Con. Um, uh, you know, what are some highlights that stand out in the, in the course of uh, researching and writing and producing Tripwire over the years? Uh, well, I, I guess the, the number of Alan Moore interviews I did were entertaining because two or three of them took place at this Italian restaurant in Northampton where he lives. And so that was the first time I did that. That, that, that did feel quite surreal. And there was a, a sort of elderly woman that came up to talk to him who was a neighbor of his. And it was quite strange to see this hulking man sort of bending down to speak to this elderly woman. But, you know, she didn't seem remotely disturbed or, or frightened by him. So that was entertaining. I mean, there have been so many. I mean, you know, through Tripwire, we did a book uh, called Studio Space, which was talking to artists about the way that they, they work. So we interviewed people like Frank Miller, uh, Joe Kubert, Sean Phillips, Duncan Fogredo, uh, Walt Simonson, Howard Chaikin, a whole range of people that we've got to know through Tripwire. Um, so no, it's, there's, there's a lot. It's quite hard to pick. I mean, there have been the odd interview, which I regret running because I felt like they were too closely tied um, to... To a, for example, I'll give you an example. So our J. Michael Straczynski interview that we ran in 2010, I think it was, a time with his rather short-lived Superman and Wonder Woman run, which was truncated for whatever reason. Um, and, and I feel like it just reads like a very bad puff piece. And I, and I regret running it. But, you know, hindsight's all well and good. But sadly, sometimes, you know, sometimes you get things wrong. Um, but, you know, we have done a lot of great stuff. We When we started, we pushed the, uh, the work of future sort of superstars or vertigo people like Grant Morrison, Pete Milligan. I mean, Pete Milligan still lives quite close to me. He's one of the very first people I interviewed. So to have access to people like them and Frank Quietly, to have really good access to those people, that was that was great. And our mission was to push sort of British talent before anybody else did. 
And uh, in the course of you know getting to know the creators and, and, and people like that in the business, uh, do you find that you're more interested in reading the comics or less interested? I mean, are you more interested in the people and the process or in the, 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 the end product? I'm probably more interested in the people, I suppose. I mean, if I'm honest, you know, I, I probably, you know, I, I enjoy the comics that I read, and I do read quite a lot. I try and read quite a lot. I enjoy them less, I think, than I used to. Hmm. Um, and I wish I wish it wasn't the case. I mean, there are still some some highlights. And I think that it's a it's a golden age outside of DC and Marvel. I actually think that this is a this is a fantastic period for you know intelligent, high quality material from other publishers. But I do feel like DC and Marvel they're sort of circling the wagons. It feels a little bit like that. They're just sort of hunkering down and and just publishing stuff that you know I've seen before. You've obviously seen it before, and it's feeling like there's less and less in terms of new fresh material from. You know what was historically called the big two, mm. but I mean people creators interest me. I mean their their habits. You know they are they are interesting, and I, I try and get in into their headspace if you like. It's something that does fascinate me. Well, I wanted to ask you that because uh, just about a week ago, I I, I actually interviewed uh, Chris Claremont, who was oh, really? the, the you know writer on the X Men for seventeen <laughs> some years and many other comics. And I, I find that uh, I'm not that interested. He's not writing the X Men now. I'm not that interested in reading the X Men anymore. I think it's just, no. you know, for somebody who grew up with it and started, you know, in 1966, 67, reading it, it, it you know, it's yes. it's 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 not a fascination for me. But to actually talk to the man who wrote it for so many years and was responsible for not just reviving it in many ways, but keeping it alive and making it huge, yes, that was more interesting to me than the comics themselves. Yes. Oh yeah, no. I mean, it is. It is about the, the the people who write and draw this stuff. They are they are interesting, and and what they bring to their work is is perhaps not always that readily apparent in terms of who they are. If you're just reading the work, but if you sit down and talk to them, you do realize. You know, for example, uh, I interviewed Adam Hughes for the studio book, and and people think Adam Hughes is just a guy who likes to draw, you know, big busty women, and which obviously he does. But the, what they don't realize is that he spent time at uh, at uh, the Musée d'Orsay and and at uh, the Louvre in Paris, you know, making sure that his reference was correct. So you know, people they belittle, you know, some of these artists without realizing that the reason why they're so good and they're so talented is because they put the the time in. For reference, and that they study the old masters, and I mean, Joe Kubert said the same thing. I mean, he was a big admirer of you know the old masters and Rembrandt. You can see that, you know, in his work, and and it gives you a whole new respect for these people that you might not have had before because you think, as I said, that you know, with someone like Hughes, you think he's just a like a good girl artist, but there's so much more to him, and there's so much more to a lot of other people once you dig beneath the surface in terms of, you know, the the application, you know, the fact they apply themselves. And make sure they get this stuff right. Hmm. So, Joel, uh, as we kind of wrap up, uh, I guess I, I usually ask my guests what's next, and it's I, I, I think uh, I think you've already kind of given that away. In another two months, you, roughly, you're hoping to have yeah. the next digital issue out. Have yeah. you? I, I guess the question is, have you have you turned your back on print entirely, or do you think you'll? Well, not 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 entirely. I mean, we're just being pragmatic at the moment. It's very difficult to fund print, but if if the digital works, then we'll use it. As a way to feed back into print, um, so we may well we, we we were doing a once a year print annual, and it, what's possible is that if the digital works out, we may well do a print annual, which would be like a best of the digital that we'd put out in the summer. So I'm not reading that out. I mean, I love print. You know, we've done print for 21 years, and I I miss it. But the nice thing about the digital is that you know you finish the magazine and you can have it up there. And things like the Ian Rankin interview, you can have audio, you can have video. The possibilities are endless, and that's actually really very, very exciting, mm. you know. And before you have to wait two weeks, you have to get proofs back, you know, all this. But you know, with with digital, it's almost instantaneous, and that's nice because it gives us a lot more freedom in terms of our schedule. Well, and I imagine having had the experience of doing the first one, the process, the production process, will be much smoother on the second one because you'll know what to avoid and you know how to get things done the first time and not have to go back and do it again. Oh yes, I mean we had we ditched 20 pages of content between when when Apple turned us down, what turns down when they bounced us back and they and it was we thought this is stupid because it had it was an autumn preview and we were into November so we thought this would be so out of date. So we 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 killed that. The Agents of Shield piece was a new newly commissioned piece 
and the Ian Rankin interview, which I did very, very close to publication, I thought this, this is, you know, this is perfect because he has a brand new Rebus book out. So this is perfect time. I was going to leave it for the following issue, but I thought, you know what, I don't have to. Hmm. So we've got a, a list of all of his novels, and then we've got a, a link through to audio interview with him talking about Rebus and, and, and you know his approach to writing. So it's it will get a little easier, I think. You know, the, the more we do, but it's not that different to print, but it's a little bit more flexible. Hmm. Excellent. Well, uh, folks, listen. You can find Joel Meadows' Tripwire magazine in the Apple App Store. And coming soon, we hope, to uh, Android and Google Play as well. Uh, and of course, you can uh, you can still find you can find uh, the uh, bound uh, 21st anniversary print edition. Uh, it's available on Amazon.com, Amazon.com.co.uk, right? And uh, if you're watching this on MrMedia.com, if you look just below the video, somewhere over here, you'll see the cover of the 21st anniversary book you can just click on it and they'll ship it to you you can have it like overnight you can have it in two days if you you know uh, maybe uh, maybe by the time you see this maybe uh, uh, maybe Mr. Bezos is using drones and you can have it in 30 minutes but uh, <laughs> or less perhaps more or less perhaps they'll shut your door down they'll make a, a square with a machine gun and then <laughs> they'll push it through it'll be like, it'll be like Terminator a very don't, don't, uh, yeah don't, Go in the kitchen with the drones. I think that's probably a a very comic book a... reference. I'd say yes. I like well, that. I... Uh, and so uh, the website for uh, Tripwire, I believe, is tripwiremag.net. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. All right. So you can go there and get updates. You'll see what's coming up. Get other information. Uh, yes, we're we'll populating it with more content. Hopefully, over the next couple of months, we'll be running. I mean, the aim is to do things, is to, is to put things up like videos. So when we go to a show, you mentioned New York, if we go to a, a comic show like that, is to put up video interviews. It'll be ex so there'll be extra content above and beyond what there is in the digital. So people will definitely need to visit the, the website on a regular basis to see what we've put up there. All right. And obviously, I know that Joel is on Facebook because that's how we met. Even though we thought it was some other way, it was through Facebook. Yeah. Uh, are you on Twitter or any of the other services? Yes, it's Joel Meadows at Joel Meadows One is my Twitter handle, and I feel people feel free to to come and check out my feed. I'm trying to get a few more followers, and we might even offer some some interesting prizes to people who follow us on Twitter. So again, that'll be, and we'll be previewing the digital both on Twitter and Facebook. Um, so when we when we begin the second issue, we'll be running some li neat little teasers from the uh, the second issue. And every time we produce a new edition, we'll be we're doing the same. So, all right. Well, uh, Joel Meadows, uh, it was a pleasure to meet you over the summer and spend time. And uh, great to have you back here. And uh, thanks for joining us today on Mr. Media. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Bob.